Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Demonte, bringing you a banger. Don't forget to go follow on my Twitch, please. Here, you will never miss out on daily payday content. Before we talk about any perks, I want to mention a few things. My builds are all centered around a different perspective of playing the game, and you won't always have the same play style as the other players may play. All of my setups will be mostly focused on the perk deck's ability for survival, not using things like first aid kits, abuse, or every build having jokers. Like, we're focusing mostly on the perk decks for the survival. Every perk deck in this game can achieve two shot armor with ICTB, but not every perk deck in this game can achieve it from the base perk. The amount of 70 armor in Payday 2 can stop light units, medics, cloakers, miniguns, shields, medic dozers, turrets, and the first responders, which are also referred to as the 40 HP cops. Armor will regen faster than HP in most cases. Also, some builds will have more to talk about than other builds, so just please bear with me. At any point in this video that we're talking damage values, 99% of the time we're going to be referring to 225 damage. The ability concept is something that not all the perk decks actually share, and I'm going to go over the concept now. So the ability concept is referencing that each perk deck that actually owns an ability will be able to offer itself no damage because of that ability. Here's the list of those abilities. You have Kingpin, you have 2 seconds of no damage from Anarchist and Armorer, you have Sociopath and Muscles Panic, you have Hacker, Stunning Cops, here's a big one, you have Dodge, allowing the player to take no damage, um, you have the Sicario Smoke Bomb, allowing the player, if standing inside their smoke, to have 100% bullet avoiding and 100% minus accuracy to the cops. What is it that they all share in common, once again, is that during their ability, none of them can take damage. The next concept I want to go over is the hits concept, which is referring to 225 damage. So, with the new release of Leech, a lot of people have been claiming it to be a broken perk deck. Here I'm going to shine some light on the hits concept on multiple perk decks. So your kingpin through grace period alone, if you have 0.35 for 225 damage, if you were to add those up to roughly one second, you would have three 225 shots added together to make around a one second time frame. Now, since the kingpin injector lasts six seconds, you can add three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen together, and you can get about eighteen shots out of the kingpin during your 6 second injector, roughly. So the leech during its injector, you can survive 10 shots. But if you get kills, you can survive 15, 20, so on and so forth. Stoic with ICTB, getting shot and then flasking before you get downed will result in 7 shots and then if you flask, it'll be 14. Now if you were to place a first aid kit at your feet, get shot to your death, so the first aid kit will auto heal you. It would be eight shots, and then if you would flask, that would equal 16. The anarchist in theory could survive a whole heist at zero HP. So we could give any type of estimate here. So in general, we're just gonna put a around a 15 to a 20 hits area. Now here's one that people really always mistake. Your dodge builds. Now we're referring to the top three best style dodge builds and this could be debatable to people. But we're referring to Hacker, Sicario, and Rogue. All of them can roughly dodge about seven bullets, and then all of them can roughly survive three shots. One to the armor, two to the HP. Oh, I seen that sniper. Clearly the Sicario will change these numbers up, but generally speaking, you'll once again dodge about seven and get hit for three. So if you were to tally those up, that's 10 shots. Now with all the builds that they just named out being within that range of 10 to about you know 15 area of shots, Leech really isn't out of the ordinary and in quotations broken. Crew Chief with 2 shot armor, 238 as the base, 276 is your base HP, but able to achieve a 400 HP pool. 
with a Joker in the perk decks buff that puts you well over 400 cheek. HP. This perk deck will offer now. damage reduction now for yourself and the team. Now when you are lower than 50% HP, it will double the damage reduction. Now it also offers an armor percentage to your team, a 34% HP increase to your team, and people that use stamina like armor players or your dodge players maybe, they'll get a, you know, a stamina increase. The dodge players that are constantly running around to keep their dodge at a high, they're going to have you know, more of a time frame to keep running because of the crew chief. We have two builds here, we're going to go over both of them. The crew chief specializes in map control. Once you grab yourself your jokers and your hostages, you're able to just do practically what you want, and your teammates are able to do practically what they want. Inside both the builds, the crew chief's going to just shrug off most of the damage like it's nothing. Simple, the sniper rifle crew chief build that we use uses ICTB, which is going to allow you to have two-shot armor. The greatest with crits is easily going to allow you to put out the DPS and keep yourself alive, and keep your teammates alive as well. For a build like this, you just have to hit your shots and play at range. Once you get within that range of the enemies, Basically, you'll pull out your secondary weapon, unless you can hit your shots, you then obviously you'll just use your sniper and you'll still hit graze on these enemies. The second build is a full crit, crew chief, with a rifle and a pistol 5.7. The 5.7 specializes for your shields, so it's still covering the same, you know, spectrum as the first build. Your armor is pretty good for light units, you're able to tank two shots at the LMG dozer. You're able to tank two shots of the 225 under the circumstance of interacting. You supply yourself with two jokers in this build. Since you are playing closer to the enemies, it's nice to have more targets basically be here for you. The weapons in this build are very versatile, being able to use practically whatever you want. The sniper rifle build I particularly went with one that has a 10 shot mag. In theory you could go with a higher damage sniper to make sure that your enemies die in one shot more like the tasers I'm specifically you know going for um, now in the other build with the rifle as long as you're you know being mindful of your concealment you can go with practically anything you want in that setup as long as once again you're mindful of the concealment the key points in this perk deck will be your armor amount your HP amount your damage reduction stamina increase and map control I got my armor busted that's not good My muscle build uses one shot armor, two shot light unit armor, coming in around 70 or 90. In some instances I actually have 117, just really dependent on the build at the time. Muscle's base HP is 460, but with a joker's buff you can get 529. Muscle has a 15% targeting chance where you're going to be more aware of the angles that are actually seeing you so you as the player need to be a little more reactive when actually playing the muscle build muscles base HP region is 3% every 5 seconds if you grab hostage taker it switches that to a 7.5 which will allow you to heal yourself faster staying in the fight much quicker if you have a joker or a hostage it'll always take 11 heals to get your life back muscle has the ability called panic Panic is a mechanic that, when firing a projectile, it has a 20% chance of making the cop panic, which, if that said projectile had a chance to actually hit the target, which allows moving and shooting to be a viable option in muscle. We have two builds here, the first one using an LMG, and it's nice to control the map with panic. Using a reload skill to make sure that you keep your ammo at and high, crits and body expertise to make sure that we keep our DPS. In this build, we do not use the use of a joker, and that does not affect our life regen whatsoever. It's still 11 heals, and we get all of our life back. This LMG setup will allow you to practically take free roam of the map, hitting any angle that you really need because you have the LMG plus accuracy. The other style is a grazed muscle. Very easy to actually control the map with this build since you have the graze set up. Any groups of enemies that actually get clustered up you're able to just you know fire one shot and everything's dead this build is best if you're able to hit your shots as soon as you start missing is where you'll start failing with the sniper rifle setup last time you joined with default join 
Leave my hostage alone, you sick son of a bitch. Where's the Thoser? Dead. Before moving to Armorer, I want to go over a concept real quick. This is the concept. If both builds, Muscle and Armorer, were both shot by 450 damage, being 225 both times, how long would it take either one of the builds to be able to get a consistent 450 damage again? In this Muscle build here, we have one shot armor, and then we take one shot to our HP, both being 225. Now if you pay attention to the timer at the top, it'll actually show you how long it takes for me to regen that 225 damage. This is with the base muscles 3% HP regen and the hostage takers regen, giving us a 7.5% HP regen. Which in terms of time, that is 25 seconds. Now if we show armor getting shot by two 225 shots, you can see that it can consistently tank the 225 shots to the armor. But now you're out of your 2 seconds invincibility and now you have to wait on your cooldown plus you have to wait on your armor regen. If you were to be adding these together you would have a 2 seconds invincibility plus 2.7 seconds of armor regen plus 15 seconds of your cooldown. That equals out to 19.7 seconds. So this means that muscle and armor can consistently both tank 450 damage and within similar time frames be able to do it again. Proving that muscle and armor alike are top tier builds. Armor has two shot armor coming in at 280. It can have two shot HP if you do decide to go the route of going for your HP. Most people will decide to go for Frenzy, since it'll give them extra damage reduction, plus the damage needed to kill the enemies that they are presented to. This perk as itself will buff its armor. It'll actually give armor regen to your team and yourself. This was the original build that actually yielded 2 seconds of invincibility with the 15 second cooldown. Agent Heaven from my Discord mentioned that armor is probably the most consistent one that you can use to drama abuse and to get extended fades. The build that I'm using uses a DMR for high DPS output. My secondary SMG is great for suppressive fire. Main focus of this build is to shoot things from long range since that most of the enemies won't really have the best accuracy at that range. While you'll still be provided with full damage, plus berserker damage, and sometimes a crit here and there. This armor build underneath certain circumstances, more specifically if you have frenzy and extra damage reduction. You can consistently get a 3 shot armor, made most consistent by the crew chief. The other setup, shouts out to strange the pudding, is, is, is armor good, CTV armor full crits, 2 shot ability. armor. Still 2 shot? His biggest difference is you're not tanking as much of the lower damage. But you have the mobility factor to maybe help you out instead. And yeah, crits as well. Well, I mean, obviously it's for crits, but... Armor is usually best used with the teammates since you actually help them get faster armor regen, but it's not necessarily needing to be a team build. When the armor is on the field, you definitely notice a difference to your armor regen. Key points of the build is armor regen, armor amount, damage reduction, ability, and DPS. Rogue build has one shot armor, coming in at 20, has two shot HP, coming in at 230, and if you grab yourself a joker, you get 299, which isn't really bad at all. The most notable thing about the rogue is its dodge, has the most passive dodge value in the whole game. But as that's being said, dodge shouldn't be your main source of survival by any means. 
That should just be one part of your build. Because dodge is initially allowing you to take no damage, but it's not a thing that's 100% consistent. Similar to 2 seconds, how you can time together your 2 seconds in your cooldown timer. Dodge is a passive and it is constantly happening, but as an experienced dodge player, you'll be able to actually count out your dodges and be able to know when you're going to get shot and when you're not going to get hit. Being a rogue, you always gotta be one step ahead. As the example just presented itself, less likely targeting is a factor that does play, you know, in factor with rogue. A more experienced player with the less likely targeting will understand how the cops are going to be reacting to them. And using that set ability to be able to put out high DPS and things like flanks or be able to push, you know, dozers, special enemies, shields, complete objectives, reach places basically that the others will never be able to reach without the rogue perk. It does offer weapon swap speed, which is a good way to swap between weapons and not always have to reload the you know weapon that you're currently using. If it's easier to whip out another weapon to put out high DPS on a you know a dozer or something. And it also has AP rounds, but nothing really that's going to be relied on, but something that definitely is nice to have. This build may look familiar to some people. This is also known as the ABC Rogue. This build offers high DPS with crits, berserker and first aid kits to keep you going. My personal setup uses the AMR-16 and the MAC-10 secondary, but any 100 damage rifle is you know, viable, and any secondary weapon that you choose that has a speed mag is what I went for. When getting shot by 225 damage in this build, you actually get left with 5 HP. 5 HP in terms of Berserker is 96% Berserker. You can easily be the center of damage in this build like again, by I using Bullseye, past, Fax, and Dodge to consistently keep yourself in the fight. I just pushed that whole thing by myself with the Rogue build and survived that all without a single teammate really having to take any bit of damage for me. Because of positioning, angles, target prioritization, blah blah blah. The whole nine yards as I always tell people. Rogue really isn't that bad. I was able to play an angle and do something that all my other teammates were unable to do. I was able to complete the you know part of the mission that everybody else was had just said they had to wait. They were sitting inside the building. They didn't have a you know a as easy of an option as I do with the road. This here is an alternative build that I've been working with for a little while now. It's a near mirror image of the ABC Rogue build, but there's a twist to it. Yielding 70 armor, 50 60 dodge, armor gating with bullseye, and life gating with first aid kits, zerk, and full crits on a DMR. Now Rogue can actually play for the team if the player using it can place himself in a you know effective positioning so that they're not really harming their teammates. As we mentioned previously, the rogue can excel in objectives, but it's best to do them with some teammates around, since dodge really isn't gonna hold up like when they shoot you know shooting at you when there's nothing around. Your key points in the build will be armor regen, HP regen, ability, DPS, and in the second build will be armor amount. With, with sounds, Crook in this setup will have two shot armor coming in at 175.5 and one shot eight HP. It does have 230 HP, and if you want to build it with a Joker, it can go to 299. Crook gets better dodge with ballistic vests. It also gets armor regen to those ballistic vests. It gets a huge armor increase yeah, to the ballistic vests specifically. <laughs> So the heavy ballistic vest will be able to yield enough armor amount, which under the circumstance of Frenzy, which will change the 225 damage to 168, will be enough to actually tank two shots of that. The Crook is a very mobile build, not limited at all. The only time that you're going to be in a scarce situation is when you have your armor broken. But you do have two shot armor to work with, and dodge, which in theory you could dodge a couple bullets, get hit for a few, and then that's how you'll work around in the build. The setup should kind of feel like a rogue, kind of mixed like an armorer, replica. but at the same time well, it's, it's got its own deal, feel though. to it. Nice 1.7 armor regen for your heavy ballistic Damn, vest. The setup that's that you're seeing now currently are. uses a DMR and an SMG real. for suppressive Wait, fire. The SMG secondary must have a fast mag so that you, you know can constantly have something quick. It. 
the DMR primary oh, actually boy. doesn't have to be a DMR. It could be anything within oh, the auto rifle is. class. This crook build will mostly focus on accuracy to do big shots of damage. This could be really nice for a team build if you are using it around your team to get kills and defending the area. The objectives can be easily done with the crook, or you can just defend areas with the crook. Dodge is just one part of the build. You also have armor regen and armor amount. The way that I've set it up, you have all this damage provided to you so that you can never die practically. The key points in this build will be armor amount, armor regen, your ability, and DPS output. If you guys are enjoying this video, please leave a like for me. I've spent a long time setting this video up. I'm sure not very many people will actually see this part of the video, but I do appreciate it. If you I did see this, maybe side. leave a comment. Looks balanced, huh, Rocky Star? <laughs> Hitman at a base has one shot armor at 221, and it has two shot HP at 230. You could Obviously also get a Joker to get 299 HP. This build will be using first aid kits and quick fix HP. for the 10% damage reduction to make a two shot armor Shocking in this build off. consistently for two minutes. So what that does is make a four shot Hitman. Now at any time that your armor breaks during this build, it's going to grant you a 1.5 second armor regen no matter what. That means armor suppression does not matter. During that 1.5 second time phase, you are very prone to getting shot to HP, which is why I didn't lean towards a frenzy hitman. Because when you're using a frenzy hitman, yes you will still have a 2 shot armor, but when your armor breaks and anything that hits your HP is basically going to kill you in that situation. So I went for the more safe route in my opinion, which is two shot armor every two minutes. But during this time period, you can use a first aid kit at any time, or you can just get hit. Now if your armor doesn't break in this build, you still have armor regen percentages that make it go faster, but it is not as fast as your 1.5 second armor regen on break. The build does come with natural akimbo skills, so basically is most geared towards an akimbo build. So I went ahead and chose some high damage setup. With the weapons that we chose, we didn't need Berserker to one-shot enemies because when the two bullets hit them, it actually tends to kill them. You can play really similar to the way that the Anarchist plays in this build due to the 1.5 second armor regen, but you're actually way more tankier in the sense of when your armor does come back. But you have to respect cover when using this build because your HP will get blasted. So with having a little more knowledge and placement and knowing the right time frames to like make a peek so if like your armor breaks maybe like half a second before it comes right back you go for the peak because the moment that they're going to hit you you have armor back hitman could be seen as a team build if you were the main person Shocking like off. by your teammates shooting stuff you could easily interact with some of the objectives as well because when you interact with this build specifically you are given 50% damage reduction that I have placed into it I've as well put in first aid kits, so if you do do you know, any objective, you can just place a first aid kit down, and then armor regen's playing for you, you have your first aid kit, plus all that damage reduction. Sometimes, in that situation, you really don't need your teammates. Key points in this build are armor amount, armor regen, HP regen, and DPS. Burglar will have one shot armor at 20, and will have two shot HP at 230, grabbing a joker to make me 299 HP. Most of the burglar's play style is going to be just like the rogue, but there is some key differences between the two. The burglar is actually able to control, it's less likely targeting, while the rogue is not able to. The burglar's less likely targeting is based around its crouching and staying still, which the player has full control over this. When you do this, you are able to effectively make flanks and do high DPS plays. Outside of stealth, the picking the doors and loud are very effective. 
and the burglar build actually excels in doing the objective. This build here will yield 55% dodge and 55% less likely targeting, which will make for an easy way for you to survive just off that alone. Now I bring in HP regen passively and we bring in another form of armor regen with the armor regen paired with the build. Mostly objective base, but is not shy of any type of combat in this build. We went for Hostess Taker as our heal in this build and the HP increase, since most of the time that we get shot we're most likely going to survive the situation and proper reacting is also going to keep you alive in these situations. And then you'll easily be able to passively heal the damage that they've done. The Burglar can easily work around the teammates because you can control your less likely targeting, unlike the Rogue. So where you need the, the less likely targeting for like an objective as an example, the Burglar can easily do so. The Burglar can easily traverse a map because you have dodge, you have less likely targeting, you have armor regen, you have a joker that's going to allow another target. So it's with ease when getting to these objectives. Key points in the build are armor regen, HP amount, HP regen, ability, and DPS. Infiltrator right off the rip comes with two shot armor at 221 as a base. Damage reduction is the included. Two shot HP at 230. We grab a joker and buff it to 299. As previously just said, Infiltrator does come natural with damage reduction, which is very handy with dealing with 225 when your base 221 armor value. It is most notable from this build. Another part of this build will be melee being able to reach in 40% of your HP value. Now if you have hostage taker during this time period, you will get two hostage taker heals during that 10 second cooldown and that will actually heal you up to your full HP's value. So it is consistent 50% HP regen. You also get a melee damage increase, which is the most common way of dealing with some of your enemies when you're at close range. My build uses an LMG, not really too specific on which one that you're using, but then you also have a 5.7 for your shields. It is very accuracy centered so that you can hit your long range shots and provide heavy damage at range. Now this build does use a CTB with fax. The fax are really only here for the aggressive plays, but with the facts, we have 10% damage reduction from quick fix, so they can always come handy paired with all your other damage reduction values. You will shrug off most damage in this build like it's nothing. Um, if this is put into a position where it needs to be a team build, you can fill the role of a tank because the amount of damage reduction that you're given, you're shaking off most damage values that's actually hitting you, so therefore you're just able to tank everything for your team. Now if you're paired with like a crew chief or an armorer, it makes it a little bit easier for you to stay alive. Shoot me, you bitch. Sociopath comes natural with two shot armor, coming in at 255. It comes with two shot HP at 230, 299 if you want to grab a joker. I'm not trying to use Considering my that most people will run it with frenzy, really that last part doesn't really matter. Sociopath will grant you one second armor reach in. If it's a normal kill, it'll just be 30 armor. If it's a ranged kill, it'll be 60 armor. That in theory is faster than Anarchist. You're gaining 60 armor per kill, which is bigger than the amount of Anarchist. And if you were to do 3 seconds of armor regen, you'll regen way more than the Whoa, Anarchist will within its 3 seconds. The, the build does offer uh -uh. damage reduction. God. It comes with natural melee damage skills, Being which pairing this with some damage skills damage from the melee skill tree, really, you can 2 hit dozers. And also when you're you get a kill in this prick it, deck, it will cause 75% so chance of causing like panic 15. to any enemies 20, that are within that radius reality, you can armor gain and the whole causing panic to the enemies but will stop them from dealing damage. My build second. uses mostly an auto rifle with a strong damage secondary. In theory you could switch your primary to a heavy hitter a and then a secondary long for long a better long ammo long you know, efficiency. I mainly focused on yeah, reloading same. times so that I can match my uptime in the build for my one second armor reach in. Dozer will not be an issue in this build as long as you kill off the group around a dozer. The dozer himself is not really that strong. You can two hit him with your melee as long as you have bloodthirst stacked up. This build can be effective to your teammates if you are the one killing heavy because then you'll make a lot of cops panic which will stop your teammates from getting shot by these cops. Alternatively you could bring an LMG in this build. I just went for auto rifles and LMGs. What you think this is? Dozer swap to the high damage? Gambler coming in with one shot armor at 221, 
and two shot HP at 322. You can make your HP 391 with a Joker. Now in my build we will be having underdog trigger so therefore our armor will be become yeah, two shot. Players that have a bigger HP pool gambler when you're picking up ammo boxes will heal yourself regions. and your teammates at that same time but period. It's nice and it's not like small heals, it's big chunks. Gambler actually picks up more ammo per box that you're picking up, but if you're picking them up too quickly, you're not able to trigger your heals, so it's best to try and pick them up within coordination with your healing. Now in the Gambler build, it's best that you have lower HP than your teammates do, because when you have lower HP than they do, you'll actually gain 20% increased heals to all your um, ammo boxes that you're grabbing, so that means your team equally will be getting the same heals, so it's best suited with the higher HP uh, teammates, things like Kingpin, Stoic, Crew Chief. It's really not that hard. Listen up here used a DMR and a 57, two not best weapons for ammo pickup if you understand what I'm saying. Really so it worked extremely well with the perk deck abilities and in increasing my ammo pickups and allowing me to continuously pick up ammo really boxes to heal myself at any time that I heals. needed it. You do have high DPS in this build, but not like a whole lot of ammo to be shooting. So you will actively have to be grabbing ammo boxes, which is going to put you in danger and you will lose HP in those situations. But that actually plays with your perk deck when at lower HP, so therefore it goes both ways. This is 100% a team build, it's best survival is with teammates, so that your healing ability will actually heal you more. But it can perform by itself, but definitely not recommended. This part that's gonna suck. Woo! Ease! Show me some hands, motherfuckers! Want that shit now! On your knees! What the fuck you break this door? Yeah, gambler's just better when you're able to get your HP regen. Beginning your HP regen can prove tough, so. In before teammates you link them, you link what? Ammo boxes, yeah. The does suck about this build is you get teammates that'll steal them basically. Not even like steal them, but you know what I mean. Play safe, please. Gambler's not always gonna be able to clutch something like that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Gambler really is a rough one to, to clutch situations. But this is the proper map for coverage, angles, a whole lot of stuff for a lot of builds. And something like the the gambler can actually fit well in a map like this. Grinder in this build will come out either way with one shot armor. Armor either being 90, 1, and or 20. Both times you'll have 322 HP. With a Joker, it'll be 391. Grinder is pretty basic when it comes to prick deck abilities. You shoot and you deal damage and then that is what gives you your HP back. And the more damage that you shoot in coordination with each other, it'll give you more HP chunks with the build. So with the setup that we went here is that we have two fast-ish firing weapons so that we can easily get our life back each and every time that we lose it. Now Grinder's base HP isn't enough to survive more than two shots to the HP, but if you're able to take one, heal up some HP, then you can constantly take more damage this way. Grinder only works in a suit or a light ballistic vest, so that's what we will be using either one of the builds that we'll be showing. My personal setup uses an automatic rifle, either an SMG or a flamethrower as a secondary. We use the light ballistic vest for 91 armor, 
Both builds will be yielding full crit and body expertise, matching it with accuracy skills so that you can hit all your shots and constantly get life back. The other build is shouts out to Strange Pudding once again. They made a grinder dodge build and they sent it to me on my build request on stream and uh, I used it on stream. It was a really good build as we can see here. The build as I mentioned is mirror image as the other build. It just it swaps out for a joker instead of armor and then you grab dodge. A dodge grinder is actually really strong since you have multiple things working for you. You have life regen, life increase, armor regen, and then you have your dodge value, which that right there is a lot of things working for you. This could be seen as a team build if you bring first aid kits to heal your teammates with. Other than that, grinder mostly will just focus on shooting and damaging things to stay alive. So in that situation, you could be helpful to your team if you're the one by them shooting. That saved my life right there. If I didn't have dodge right there, pudding, I would have died. I dodged that minigun, his one bullet when I was at low HP, and that one dodge saved my life. Oh, I thought I was about to get cloaked. I was like, are you kidding me? Yakuza at base Yakuza comes in at one like shot armor, armor at 221 basically. and it's two shot HP Faster at 230. If you were to go for HP for seconds. some reason, you can get 299 with a Joker. Yakuza specializes in low life because when you're at lower life form, you will actually move faster. You will be able to regen your armor at up to 100% quicker and you actually get a damage increase starting at a higher value than what it is based off the normal insane. Berserker perk. So when I'm using this build, I try to put in damage reduction so that I can get two shot armor for my base armor. And then I run around with Frenzy and Berserker so that I'm able to do you know one shot damage to everything. And then that's really how the Yakuza build comes together. This build allows you to really play aggressive, but the speed and the damage that you have, you have to use it wisely. If you yield this power correctly, the Yakuza can run the map and never take it down. So play aggressive, but remember, timing is everything, and that actually is very specific to Payday as well. This build that you're seeing uses a DMR, really accuracy focused, and a 5.7 for the shields. Since if you're going to use a DMR for shields, you're going to waste nearly all your ammo shooting that shield. Now obviously the DMR can be changed, you don't have to use the M308. I was specifically using this weapon in this build because my buddy shouts out to my man Broxton who gifted me the uh, skin. So ever since then I've been using the skin on this weapon class, or I mean this build I should say. In theory you could bring an auto rifle like anything that has decent damage, maybe like a Car 4 or an AK rifle or a JP36, something along the lines of this. And you could use this as your build because you still have all this berserker damage. Just you wouldn't have as much damage per shot. The turn off to that is you can shoot more. So it really just depends on what the player is looking for. Is this a team build? No, not at all. You're mostly just going to be focusing on killing things to keep yourself alive. But with that damage and kills that you're producing, that can help your team. Some key things in this build are armor regen. Armor amount, speed increase, DPS buff. The DPS buff is only present inside the Yakuza build. No other build in this game gets extra damage. X Presidents comes in with one shot armor at 20 armor value, 322 HP, and if you grab a Joker, it puts you at 391. X Presidents will stack life with the kills that you and your team produce. The more that you guys produce, it can go to a full 210 HP regen. There's a card in the deck called the Perfect Line, which is really confusing to some people. And I'm going to give you an explanation now. The Perfect Line is the lower armor that you have, the faster armor regen will be presented to you when you get the kill. Now if you have armor left over and you get a kill, it won't be as fast, but you still get a better percentage to your armor regen. X-Presidents does give itself an HP buff, which is pretty nice. 
It also does have dodge in store, so therefore you can have so many things in your arsenal right off the rip. But, going into your skills, if you want to increase this with a sprinting dodge, it makes it just much more easier to do things when you're moving around. I just want to mention something that this is not a build that needs the help of a joker. This is not a build that needs the help of outside healing. The perk deck can fully heal itself inside the ex-presidents. My setup here uses a snipe rifle and tries to play at range so that I can continuously stay alive. The DPS is consistent with the greys being able to just knock out whole groups of enemies and then that right there will stack up my life you know, in no time. We do grab bullseye in this setup because we don't need just the perfect line to give us the healing. Bullseye or any form of armor regen will actually grant you the healing bonus that this perk deck offers. So with the circumstance of bullseye, we can get 210 HP in an instant. Ex presidents is a team build only under the circumstance of the ex presidents. You're going to get all the benefit yeah, while your teammates awesome. aren't really getting much from well, you so yourself. Sure really the only thing that you're going to be offering is them. if you're the one killing. And inside this build so here, like you will definitely be the one killing YouTube with the like greys. Really You'll actually be the one controlling the map. I do want to mention so that if, if really you jump in X Prez, it's basically. not very easy until you start playing it a little while. Those are long streams, so but once you get good at it, it's Maybe hard to get downed weeks, with the X Presidents. Really Maniac comes in at 2 shot armor oh, as a base at 221 and 2 shot HP at 230, and you can increase your HP to 299. Yeah. Maniac is fairly Maniac. simple as to what it actually does. Fucking, uh, it's absorption. Absorption will absorb the damage, shot. so if the damage is light it's enough, that. you actually take no damage whatsoever mm -hmm. in that situation. But now if the damage is large enough, you will still take a piece of the damage the off, but you're still taking right. huge amounts of the damage. Right there again. I got so with absorption by, being I mean that if the damage is light enough, you can just absorb the damage and take no damage. And if the damage is higher than your absorption, you can take that amount of absorption that you have off of the total damage amount and then you still take the damage amount. In my setup here I use Frenzy and then there's another alternative it's HB build. Like the Frenzy build is going to allow you to tank way that more damage because Frenzy is going to make the numbers of the actual long. damage smaller so that your absorption you can actually just make things not do now. any what? damage whatsoever. It's best to use an explosive with the uh, Maniac build because Maniac that will give you absorption quickly. Build. I went for an SMG secondary, but in theory, you could go with a secondary explosive and a primary rifle, or a primary LMG. This is just what I went for, just because I kind of wanted to use the piglet. And as we mentioned, the absorption will actually give you a two-shot armor in this build, so your 221 is viable. This is a team build only if you can offer your teammates the absorption, so you have to be the person to continuously be shooting and dealing damage. It's most helpful for your right teammates to have damage reduction, big it, armor pools, or HP armor pools. Uh, Mr. Bad. Right there again. I got hit by a heavy unit twice and still had armor left over. Anarchist as a base has one shot armor, one shot HP. Anarchist will trade off all of its HP for armor value. Like Anarchist, wolf. Anarchist has many armor regen timers actually playing with inside the build. It has a two second passive, but the passive is just continuously happening. You have a damage regen, which is based on 1.5 second regen, and you can always pair it up with bullseye, which is 2 second regen. I just want to point out that anytime that you're missing armor in Anarchist, it's going to allow you to instantly have your passive just instantly happen, and then if you do damage, it'll instantly give you your 1.5, and then you have the cooldown. That's the so on and so forth with every build, with bullseye specifically. I want to give a huge shout out to my man Cash the Great. From years ago, he has made this build, way before it has surfaced to become the meta anarchist sniper build that it is today. So once again, huge shout out to Cash the Great. So he specialized this build to be following an uptime that the anarchist is able to follow. You have you know, multiple armor regens, so you want to have the fastest reloads, huge damage output, big armor pool, a joker, damage reduction. You shrug off damage like it's nothing in this build. Now if you have a joker, if you already have your 205 armor, a joker will buff you to 313. 313 with the frenzy's 25% damage reduction can actually make a 3 shot anarchist. So since my build has bullseye aced, bullseye aced paired with the frenzy aced 
and having the 313 armor value, that will allow you to get a 3 shot armor consistently inside Anarchist. This is only a team build under the circumstances of you killing everything with your grey sniper. Biker has 1 shot armor in this build at 90 and has 2 shot HP at 230. You could always buff your HP and get 299. Biker's perk deck ability offers you 5 armor and 5 HP off the very first perk deck card. You can also do 4 armor regens or life regens, both of them actually, within a 4 second time phase. The lower armor value that you have at the time period, the faster armor regen that you'll have, and the same goes for your HP. The lower oh, HP amount that you have at the time period, the faster timers that you'll have for both. So breaking your armor will result in a faster regen. Same thing goes for when you regen your armor and have an armor value like 90 armor as an example. When you regen 5 armor back, you'll still be missing 90% of your armor, giving you an extremely fast armor regen after you have already gotten an armor regen. If you're looking to regen HP in this build, you just need to take a shot to your armor and then go for some kills for HP. The setup that I'm using here uses armor value so that the percentage that I have missing when my armor gets broken stays really low so that the timer itself becomes you know faster for my armor regen. This focused high DPS and biker berserker. We don't need any outside healing because biker can heal himself fully. This is a team build because biker will allow itself to get armor regen and life regen from its teammates. And it's not anything random, it's all based on very specific timers and very specific armor and HP values that you're sitting at. Kingpin with 1 shot armor at 70 and 2 shot HP at 414. If you grab a joker it makes it 483, making it 3 shot HP. Kingpin right off the rip actually gets extra HP as one of the buffs. It brings the injector to the table, which was pretty special when it first came along. A lot of people confuse as to what the injector actually does, and here's what it actually does. When you take damage inside the injector, you take the damage and then you get healed for it. So that's why you get killed by things like green dozers as an example. The green dozer deals 560 damage, even if you have a joker. Your 483 HP pool cannot take 560, so therefore that's why you die, unless you have armor. Inside the injector as well makes you get targeted, which some people are like, well why is that a good thing? To the players that actually understand why targeting is a good thing is because you'll be able to be opened up to the angles and actually be able to know the angles that you're getting seen from. So if you know the angles that you're going to get seen from, in the future you can see these angles without the injector and not die to them. Both the setups that you'll be seeing here have actually both been redeemed on the channel points. One huge shout out to my man Ahmed, Hamburger Cheeseburger, Gordon Ramsay, whatever he wants to actually go by. And the other one is Strange Pudding. My friend Ahmed sent me the LMG build. Pudding sent me the Sniper Rifle build. Sniper Rifle build is best to control the map from range, and then you have huge killing potential for your injector regens. So you'll be getting your injector back with ease in this build. So all you have to do is just make sure that you hit your shots. Now, the pistol in this build will deal huge damage to the dozers all you have to do is whip it out and spam at him I tend to try and break the faceplate with the sniper at range and then once I get you know close to him smack the injector hit him with the deagle and then every time the dozer drops also I want to point out on that build we use threat level just to mess around with some threat level on that one the LMG with the grenade launcher kingpin can easily control the map in a different fashion more of a spraying fashion but this setup is not shy of accuracy, it will hit its shots from across the map. All you have to do is make sure that you can aim. The LMG Kingpin setup has yet to been shut down. You will survive pretty much every map and survive damn near anything the cops can throw at you. This is a team build because when you use your injector, you actually will get targeted for your teammates. So therefore they will take no damage while you are taking all the damage, but not really taking damage because you're inside your injector. So you're being healed for it as long as it's not a green dozer. Lag, bro. Sicario will have one shot armor at 20 and two shot HP at 230. Buffing your HP with a joker will give you 299. 
Sicario has stacking dodge when you get shot, and this is a cooldown of 4 seconds, so you can infinitely stack dodge in this build. Now, anytime that you dodge anything in this build, it will instantaneously regen your armor with no cooldown. The build does offer passive dodge and the smoke bomb. The smoke bomb originally gives you 50% bullet avoid and 50% minus accuracy. Now if you're standing inside the smoke bomb, it will increase these effects by 100%. So 100% bullet avoiding and 100% less accuracy to the cop. The setup here uses an auto rifle and the 5.7 specifically. The 5.7 will specialize for the shields. The auto rifle doesn't have to be specific. The uh... AK-5 that we're using here was just what I was wanting to use. You could use an AK rifle, you could use the Car 4, you could use the Union. It really just depends on what you're looking for. We did accuracy base this, but still met the requirements for concealment. So if you wanted to hit your shots across the map like I'm going to be inside this build here, then you have full customization options to give yourself sights, stability options, accuracy options. Also, if you choose the auto rifles, you will have good damage on the opposite side of the map. So therefore, when you do put some customized options on there, you can get some good shots for good damage. We did supply ourselves with first aid kits and hostage taker. Can be a bit of a safe route here, but as you see how aggressive we play, it definitely is the play when playing this style of build. Is this a team build? Yeah, I would uh, claim this to be the objective king. The Sicario can cover his teammates as well as himself with the smoke bomb. Now Sicario doesn't need the smoke bomb to survive in this situation because you have things like bullseye, you have things like life gating under the circumstances of first aid kits and hostage taker. Um, you have dodge inside your build, you have stacking dodge, and you have armor regen on dodge. Now the smoke bomb is just going to make it you know, 100% easier to survive, and will normally ensure your survival. Just because you're inside your smoke doesn't mean they can't hit you, because Payday 2. Stoic's base HP is 250. With ICTB, you have 451. 520 is with a Joker. That's with ICTB. Now 300 is for the Ballistic Vest, Light Ballistic Vest to be specific, and 369 is with a Joker. Those are the builds that I use. Stoic has a 10 second yeah, cooldown on its Stoic actual really flask, like but its flask thing, will remove like the Stoic current damage being up. done to you. Not now like the last part of the ability will give you 50% of the damage I mean, that they just the, dealt the back. So the, the, the blacked out HP that you're Steam. missing will be able to come back. The thing called the calm ability. The calm ability is if you survive damage for 4 seconds, then the damage that's present will come back. So if you get hit by 225 damage, which is hitting you for 168, if you wait the 4 seconds, if memory serves me correctly, that damage value should be given to you back as 126. Because during the calm ability, you will lose out on damage value. Getting kills will regen your flash back faster. The unpenetrable skill inside this build is where you have lower HP, you'll be actually able to get your flask back faster, which will be granted to you to get your HP back faster. So long story short, Stoic is you get shot and then you hit your flask to heal the damage back. And then if they hit you for a big enough value, you actually get extra HP for it. Now you get extra HP for it every time, but I specifically mean for bigger HP, you'll noticeably see a huge chunk of HP with it. In my setup that you're seeing here, uses 300 HP light ballistic vest Stoic with full crits. Now you see the builds using the AK rifle, but obviously you don't have to use the AK rifle. If you don't like that gun, you can use whatever you like. I just specifically like that skin that I used sure on it, so that's why I was using it. It was well, built more for the accuracy and concealment. No we specifically it, used the 5.7 secondary to deal with shields I'll so that we didn't have to invest too heavy into shock and awe. If you ever get downed AI in this 300 HP setup, really all you will need is 3 heals from hostage taker and then you will be able to get shot by a 225 damage and then you will be able That's to hit your flask and then be at about a half HP pool. Stoic can be complex when you're first jumping into it, but after learning the build, you could probably um, drop yeah, out some things like first aid kits and maybe swap out for med bags, or you can do things like ammo bags. 
Because once you learn that you can heal yourself from the flask, the comm ability, and things like hostage taker, you can just save points and stuff like first aid kits, and either grab like more accuracy skills, or maybe even some damage stuff, or maybe you can fully swap out into a different deployable. Stoke is a really good team build when you're actually playing by the teammates, because you'll be actually able to tank their damage, and you'll just never falter for the damage values that's hitting you. Now if you can consistently shoot back in Stoic, there's no reason that you should be dying unless obviously you're getting hoarded or if you don't understand the situation that you walked into. Stoic is about understanding what's really going to happen, understanding damage values, understanding the situation yeah, before the situation really sails. Like the there's a secondary Stoic ICTB build with though. first aid kits, like um, LMG, and thing. an explosive, but I'm sure everyone has seen this build by now. Key points of the build are HP regen, HP amount, ability, DPS, and um, map control. I think Hitman 3 is one of those games that are about to be coming to Steam. Hacker in this build has one shot armor at 117 armor, two shot HP at 322 HP, and with the Joker's buff you get 391. Tag team when you're actually like trying to heal yourself you have to tag a teammate now when you tag a teammate it actually heals both parties you are given damage absorption by 20 points but that's given to both parties that right there is allowing 221 ictb to be consistent two shot for both people using it tag teams most notable for being able to fully regen its hp during the injector and constantly staying inside the injector while being able to get kills produced and then constantly stacking HP. My setups here are a sniper and a Kimbo setup. The Kimbo's one is for DPS, so I can heal myself up like extremely quickly. It helps you keep your injector active so that you're able to keep your heals up. Best suited for, I'd say close range. Medium range isn't shy though. The build does shield 117 armor, and during interacting with stuff, 225 damage can be a two shot. That's just because of your damage reduction 50% of interacting. Now if you include things like absorption, maybe you can get some funky stuff out of it. Now, the damage reduction makes that value of 225 into 112.5. 117 armor can tank two shots of 112.5. Yeah, the armor value being at 117 isn't just random, it's there for a reason. The Akimbo setup will specialize in close range, as I mentioned previously, so if you want to use it on maps that actually have enclosed areas or maybe that aren't so huge, that's probably your best results. The Sniper Rifle Grays build is best to be used at range. You aren't shy at close range combat, you do have an SMG secondary for suppressive fire. The Sniper Rifle build will allow you to stack up heals extremely fast when doing the injector with a teammate while the teammate will be able to run around and do their kills in their build. The Graves build will definitely specialize in map control, being able to fully control what you're wanting to, you know, complete. Is Tag Team a team build? Well, I'd say yes. Tag Team is able to supply its teammates with HP indefinitely, so if a teammate doesn't have HP in the perk deck, then you can just fully offer it to them the whole game. If a teammate needs to save points by chance, and maybe they can't grab life regen, the tag team's always a viable option to help them keep themselves healed up. Tag team's always nice for teammates that have first aid kits as their main heal, and if they get hit by something light, maybe go ahead and tag that teammate so that they can get their HP back and not have to worry about a first aid kit heal. The hacker build has one shot armor coming in at 20, has two shot HP at 276, with a joker, you get 345. Now, if you have a crew chief on the board, you can get a 400 HP pool. Now, that's only because you share the same pool of the crew chief. Hacker perk deck actually is bringing a ECM for life regen to the board. That life regen can offer that regen to your teammates as well. Anytime that you get a kill during the hacker ECM jammer, you'll be able to get 20 dodge stacked up on a 20 second cooldown. This can be used to supply yourself with extra dodge to make a, wow, I don't know, aggressive play or a, you know, flank for the team or make the objective get completed. Build, I promise. This, is this hacker graze build here can one shot dozers as long as the faceplate and glass is broken on the dozer. If you hit a crit, it's 100% death. 
The Hector can fully heal itself from the Prick deck, so that's why we don't go for anything like a Joker or anything like a Hostage Taker in this specific setup. Now if you wanted a Joker so that you could achieve that 400 HP pool, there's no worries. All you really need is a Crew Chief teammate and then you need to grab yourself a Hostage. Hacker is going to be helpful for your teammates because when you're actually using your ECM jammer it's going to stun the enemies and that's going to help your teammates from them not taking damage because of you. Now that's almost the opposite of what Rogue does. Rogue is getting them hit, Hacker is going to help them not get hit. Hacker does have the normal targeting system, so its dodge Salam, level is pretty high, I I but over you know a couple game. dodges it's no longer that strong anymore, so you may have to be mindful of this when actually playing the build. Because Hacker does come with a strong amount of dodge, you as the player have to appropriate yourself and position so that you aren't just face tanking and making your dodge not really become what you want it to be. This is a team built under the circumstances of being able to heal your teammates with the ECM jammer and being able to supply yourself with high dodge, HP regen, HP amount, constantly stay in the fights because of the dodge, armor regen, and HP amounts that you have. In this map, control is just unbelievable inside the hacker. You can play from any position with the sniper rifle build and you'll be able to continuously stop the enemies. Some key points about the build are armor regen, HP regen, HP amount, stun ability, ability as well, and map control because this build does use dodge as well. This is probably one of the best perk decks to use as a low level player because it offers you something in stealth and something in loud. I'm sorry buddy. Probably wanted that in, uh, ammo box. Leech with one shot armor either being 70 armor or 20 armor and 2 shot HP at 414 HP or with a joker buff getting 483. Leech when you use your injector will break your HP up into 10% segments. All damage taken during that 10 second injector will only take away 10% of the life. Now the 10% of the life that you lose will be granted to your teammates 10% of their HP pool. If you were to get two kills during your injector, it will grant back one block of the 10% HP. Now that they deal one 10% block each time that they shoot you, this is actually pretty ideal. You just have to stack up two kills each time that you want to get 10% of your HP back. Now if you want to get a full HP regen, that's 20 kills. Also, your injector lasts 10 seconds, the cooldown is 30 seconds, by the time your injector is actually finished, it is 20 seconds left of the cooldown. Now considering if you're getting kills during your injector, you can actually have your injector be almost up all the time as long as you're getting continuous kills. Now this build has like a sort of like a built-in messiah and a sort of built-in swan song style. Now if you ever get downed using the leech build, you can get yourself right back up by using the injector. Now you can only survive for 10 seconds unless you either A heal in a medic bag or B heal a teammate now healing a teammate costs six seconds a medic bag roughly is like three or four so I mean you usually have time to run across the map with the time frame that you're given during that 10 second injector to be able to heal yourself and be able to heal a teammate or be able to heal yourself and save yourself leech can excel in running across the map like a kingpin but Unlike the kingpin, you have to actually focus some kills during that time period, or you'll get slowed to a stop. My setup personally uses the snipe rifle with graze, which is really nice to control the map. The SMG is great for suppression, and it's nice to have it as a close range uh, weapon. With the snipe rifle leech, it's really hard not to stack your life up really easily. Anytime that you lose about 3 or 4 blocks of 10% HP, you go ahead and shoot a few times at you know the cops with your grays and you've immediately you've got your HP back. The other setup here I want to give a big shout out and a huge thank you to my man Rocky Star. Thank you my man for moderating my stream and being here for me all the time. He had sent me a build request for Leech Dodge and it turned out extremely well so here it is featured in the video. So similar to the grinder dodge, how you have so much working for you like life regen, life amount, armor regen, DPS output, 
You add some dodge into the mix, and the build is nearly unkillable. Is this a team build? Is what some would ask. Well, the quite frank answer to all this is, is that yes, Leech is by far the best team build in the game for healing decks. It's able to give other teammates, you know, huge amounts of HP all at the same time, and then be able to just passively heal its HP back if need be. Or, during the injector as it's giving its teammates HP, it can just pile up a bunch of kills, and then it's like they never even lost HP. Leech being one of the newest perk decks to Payday 2, taking one of the top spots immediately because of its way that it's used, as we discussed earlier in the uh, whole video. The hits concept and the ability concept of Leech, you know, match the criteria as what the other perk decks do, so it's not really out of the ordinary when talking about something like this. If anybody's actually made it to this part of the video, thanks so much for watching. I spent a long time making this, and I hope you guys do enjoy it. There's hundreds of edits in this single video, um, thousands of voice lines that I had to sit here and re-record, hundreds of hours of gameplay from Payday 2 on streams. Please sub would mean so much to me, comment on the video, like it, and if you want more of these videos, or maybe individuals, tell me.